All right, I think it's time to start. Okay, can everybody hear me? Um, I have uploaded a video on Canvas for today, um, which is in fact a video um, that I have about how to use the Smith chart. So for those of you who have difficulty with the Smith chart, please, please go over that video. It's from another similar class like this when we were recording everything, all right? But it's specifically on the Smith chart and nothing has changed about the Smith chart. So today we're gonna solve last, um, yes, uh, Monday's problem using the Smith chart. I have done some small introductions on the Smith chart, but you know, in reality, you, you have to use it to be able to, to learn about it. So we're gonna do that problem, see how we find the same results, hopefully. <laughs> and then we are gonna solve some additional problems. Um, I will give you homework on Smith chart today to then for you submit it by the time we're done with this class, which is gonna be next Tuesday, okay? And it's gonna be just for practice. I want you to practice a little bit with the Smith chart. All right, so any questions, yes. No, it's gonna be for a grade, but I, you know, I had an option to give you a homework or not to give you a homework this late, but I decided to give you homework, which you're gonna receive points for. I, I will never ask you to do work without getting points, unless, you know, to review the material that and learn the material we cover in class. But um, yes, one or two what? Ah, there is, yeah, two. One individual, but both very related. You know? All right, um, and you're gonna be able to solve it exactly. I just wanted to do it yourselves because it's one thing to see me doing it and say, ah, that's easy. That's what happens. So that's the trap a lot of times. A lot of things seem easy when we try to do them ourselves, you know, then we realize that we are missing something, all right? So any other questions about that? Okay, so um, let me, uh, do this, tables. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Room tables, let's see. Other. Oh, yeah. All right, so we'll continue with the Smith chart today. And as I said, we're gonna solve the previous problem. So I'm gonna just write it for you, just a schematic. So let me do it up here. Let me do it up here. So practically we had a section of a line All right, so maybe do it a little thicker. And then we duplicate that. And at the end of this, we place the load. There was a hundred ohms. ZL, 100 ohms. And then we had the source, an ideal source here. VS. And we said that VS was giving us five volts. It does not matter in terms of reflection coefficient, but uh, I think it was five volts. And then, we want it to place in what we saw is to place a um, reactive network somewhere between the load and the source, hopefully closer to the load, all right? To be able to match the load to the line. And what that meant really for us is the following. If I go here and open up a gap, 
and here. And as a matter of fact, I will move the lines a little further out. So now I can take this one and move it there. All right, so what we did, we placed a reactive load here and we said that was in series and that Jx has the units of um, all right, it's reactive, but it has the, it's the Jx units of um, so practically it's like an impedance, all right, it's like the imaginary part of a complex impedance, okay, and we connected that here. And then we said, there are two things we don't know. There is this length we have to find, and there is X that we have to find, all right? So these two things we do not know. And we solved the problem. We solved the problem by saying that to match this line, practically, we want to make the reflection coefficient here, at that point, and in fact, as I said, you're gonna always assign here uh, the, no, the ports. This is port AA prime. This is port B, B prime. This is port C, C prime. This is port D, D prime, okay? That's how we name them. And then we wanted to make gamma at B, B prime to be equal to zero. That's matching, okay? If the reflection at BB prime is zero, that means that all of the power that is produced by the source is gonna go through BB prime without reflections. And because there is no other resistive element other than the load, it's gonna all be absorbed by the load, okay? That is the whole deal. Question is, how do we do things on the Smith chart? And the first thing we're gonna do before you go to the Smith chart is to normalize. So I'm writing here, normalize first, all impedances, normalize all impedances by dividing by Z naught all right, so we have ZL normalized now, which is ZL over Z naught. And since I did not mention anything about Z naught, it's 50 ohms. So I will put here. So you remember Z naught is 50 ohms. All right, and then this one is gonna be two. And then we normalize X which we don't know in terms of Z naught and therefore X with a bar implies X over Z naught. And then we will normalize all lengths normal lengths normalize normalized with respect to lambda, okay? The frequency I had given you, oops, here, is 10 gigahertz. But then I also mentioned that if I ask you to solve this problem and you give me the result in lambda, that is a solution. I'm not gonna, uh, unless I ask specifically, give me your result in physical dimensions, then you should stop at lambda, all right? Okay, so now having that in mind, I'm trying to solve the problem. What is the first thing we do? We try to find where the load of the line is, all right? On the Smith chart, the only impedance that we know right now normalized is ZL. And therefore, I have to find where it is. Where is normalized ZL is two. Let me raise that part. Is two. Where is, it's just two. 
all right? Real number. Where is two? Two is here. And put it here. How did I find two? I, yes, I looked at all of the circles here. I will just erase that. I will look, look at all of these circles that go by the resistive circles. And the only one that goes through two is where I put the, the point. So I'm going to erase those because I you don't need, you need to be, to be erasing things that are not necessarily important. So if you do that, always on paper, work with pencil, not pen. And on um, if you do it online, you have the capability to el eliminate things. But on paper, please only work with pencil, not pen with the Smith chart, because you're gonna to have to eliminate things. Otherwise it's gonna be so complex that you're not gonna be able to know where is left and where is right. This is how complex you can get if you leave everything there. All right, now, do you remember how we ended our lecture last time? We ended our lecture by drawing a circle and that circle wasn't different, it was the circle that show us how we move around the Smith chart, uh, excuse me, the transmission line. It was a circle that always has, so the circle that show us how we move along the transmission line always has its center at the center of the Smith chart. I will do it with purple visible. So it's always has its center here, all right? Now I'm looking to draw the circle that primarily, so I'm right here, this point, the red point here, let me also show both of them. The red point on the Smith chart corresponds to DD prime, that's what I am. And now I wanna move, all right? I wanna move on this line. We'll see how we are gonna figure this out. Not, not yet, but first of all, I have to worry on how I move from here there on the Smith chart because mathematically we moved here and we wrote the equations, all right? Mathematically, we don't have to move. We just go to a place and write the equations that apply. And when we came here, we wrote the input impedance for this section of line. Now, I'm not gonna use the equation, so I have to find this input impedance. So first, to find the input impedance, I have to move along this line, okay? How do I move the line? always to move along any line, to move along any line, you have to put a center at the center of the smooth chart. And then you have to find a circle. There are multiple ways of finding that circle. Now, what do we know about, first of all, what is this circle? Why do we say it's the circle? Like, let me write this circle, a different one. I'm gonna write this one. Let's consider that this is a circle that shows a transmission line. Why do I say that this shows a transmission line? Because this every point, every point on this circle represents the input impedance on a transmission line at any point of the transmission line. Got it? It is not, not anywhere. So Z naught is not what gives me the radius of the circle, all right? Because I know the center, the only, is, the only thing that I need to find out is what the radius of the circle is to draw. So since Z naught is not there, all right, what tells me what the radius of the circle is or what the circle is? If I know the impedance at any point on this line, then I know the circle because I know the center, all right? If I know the center and any point on the circle, because that's the impedance, the input impedance and any point on the line, then I know the whole circle. Okay, which impedance do I know on this section? Yes, I know the load. The load is the impedance at the prime of this section. So which, where did the circle is gonna have to go through this red point? And then if I make that circle go through this red point, there, let me see whether I have to move it like that. 
If I make that circle go to my red point, which I have to make bigger so you can see, its red point is my load. Then this is the circle that corresponds to this transmission line with that load at the end, all right? So practically, what is the interesting thing? Now, if this were to be long, for example, before I added this, right? Before I added this, the line was, the line was extended. So without adding this thing, the, the reactants, if I had the original line, then every single point of this circle, all right? And you remember how do we move from the load towards the generator? Here. I will show it also with green. How we move from the load, it says it here. I will put it wavelengths towards generator. So practically, we have to move like that from our load to find the various impedances. Because as we move from the load, I'm going to raise the generator. So I have to move from there down. All right, from there down. Okay, so let me also show that. This is how I'm going to move. Because I have to go from here to where that and find the impedance here, you remember? Because we wrote it as an equation before. Remember, we wrote the impedance as equation. Now we don't use equations. We're gonna find the same impedance just by playing this game. All right, they have to go down. Okay, so now it gets a little complex. Yes. I'm sorry, I don't know what works down. Because here, it says here, wavelengths towards generate. <clears throat> so that there, did you see the arrow? Yeah, that tells you that if you want to move from here towards the generator, only this direction. It's said for you. Now, if you ask me why, I don't know. <laughs> the people who developed that, they developed it that way. Yes. I was not the one. Yes. So we're looking at the top side, we're going to go from the left side and circle up. No, we're going, we're going if you want to go here, for, for the same top. thing. No, these two are not different. It's one line. Mm -hmm. But but so we're we're going this way because we're going back that way along the transmission line. Yes, because we go like that. Okay. We go from here. If you were a little person. You will go like that. Okay. Yeah. And that's the direction that I have to go. If you go the wrong, the opposite direction, you're going to find the wrong mistake, the wrong numbers. Okay. So now, all right. So now I'm moving here, but I don't know where to start. Why? Because I don't know this. Hmm. That's a problem, huh? There is one more problem. Not only I don't know where to start, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. I'm starting and then I'm adding something. So how do I add in series this? That's the question. Okay, we can add this here, but we will see how. It always has to do with the, what that means. Adding here is a mathematical terminology, right? What does it mean? Physically speak, it mean, means that I'm going to add in series and reactants. And what does that mean? That means that whatever impedance I have here, if I add this, the impedance here is going to have the same real part but a different reactive part. All right, let me write it here for you to see it. So um, I will go here, one second. And I'm gonna add one more page because I will have to write some notes for you. Okay, so if I have a transmission line, let me do the same here. Uh, rather take this one, copy. That. 
not okay let me see where this goes <coughs> oh, i know so i have to take this one and then go this one hopefully okay before i added the reactive component so let me do that before i added that i had this extended Whatever these people have tried to do with the software has not succeeded. It was much better before. Anyway, so if before I before I added this, it was just a through line. All right, and if I were to move from here there, I would move on the purple circle. And I will move until I would find my source. Or whatever distance this is. Now, I don't know. And then when we added this, so bracket, when we added that, uh, if we were to follow the same thinking that we did with the theory B when, when we solved it theoretically, we said, okay. I have to find the input impedance here at that point. Here, I will have therefore to find the input impedance at CC prime. And then we said, if I find that input impedance, I can take this one, I'm just repeating what we find, found last time, I can take this, copy, paste it here, and then having the input impedance, I can eliminate all of this, even if I don't know it yet. All right, and its place, I'm gonna, it's place in place of all of that. Now I'm gonna add, an impedance here, which is nothing else, but the input impedance that I have indicated here. Okay, that's what we did in theory. And then in theory, we said, for us, now that we have added this, we need to find B and to find this. So the reflection curve is here. Okay, and then we wrote it out the whole thing. And we found the result. We found one complex equation, and we split the real part, the imaginary part. We made therefore two equations, two unknowns, we found it. Okay. And we're not gonna do this right now, but the thinking is the same. So we say, okay, as I walk now on my Smith chart, I know I don't know where to start. The only thing that I know is what to achieve after I start. If I stop in the wrong place, my goal is not gonna be achieved. It's like you guys, when people go and uh, when they, in sports, when you do the like the high jump, people have to, to put their first foot on the right place and then they have to, to jump high enough. If they make a mistake with any of the two, yes, they don't go anywhere. So you have to decide where to put your foot down <laughs> It's not accidental. They know exactly where to put it. So when they jump high, they do. They have the right results. It's the same kind of thing here. You're not going to stop anywhere. You have to stop thinking what is going to happen after I stop. That's what they're asking. What is going to happen after I stop here? Am I going to even if I jump high, where am I going to go? Obviously. So the question is here: Where do we want to go? When is the reflection coefficient zero? at the center of the Smith chart. At the center of the Smith chart, the reflection coefficient is zero. You know why? Because the input impedance here, you remember, all of these are impedances. The normalized input impedance is how much? One. And how much is the reflection coefficient? <coughs> the 
reflection coefficient, if you remember, at this point, all right? So if this is the impedance here now, and that is the Z input at BB prime, then gamma at BB prime will be Z input normalized at BB prime minus one over Z input normalized at BB prime, because that's your load now, all right, plus one. Therefore, at that point, for me to get gamma BB prime zero, I need to make all of this one. So at the end of every matching problem, your destination, no matter where you start from, your destination is this. So the question is, how do I go there? You cannot go straight lines on this. You can only go along three circles and this form, only circles. One are the resistive circles. Two are these ones, which are the positive reactive. Three are these ones, which are the negative reactive. And four are these ones, which are transmission lines. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I have to add a reactive element. <coughs> If I add a reactive element, what does that mean about the real part of my impedance? That is not changing, all right? Because here, you need to remember that Z input B, Z input at BB prime normalized is gonna be JX normalized plus Z input at CC prime. When you have a complex number and you add only an imaginary number, what happens to the real part of the complex number? Remains the same, okay? Therefore, the real part of this impedance is the same with the real part of this impedance, okay? Got that? That is very important. Okay, if that is true, what does that mean that these two impedances, this one, the Z input BB prime, and this one, the Z input CC prime, it, it means that this one and this one on the Smith chart will be on which same circle? <laughs> on the circles, that have the same, where the points have the same real part. Which circles have the same real part points? Only these ones, all right? So I am here, I can move only this way, but I wanna go here. And I wanna go there using one circle where all of the resistive parts are equal, yes. Okay, so you're right. So as I go from point the red dot down this way, all right? Does not show it like that, but when I... Oh, the highlighter, I can do a highlighter. Then this one. No, you write on the devices. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. So here, thank you. I never used it before. So this one, then I go down here. All right. And I go and I go. I can go forever. I don't know where to stop. However, I know that wherever I have to stop, my new impedance which is gonna be somewhere on the purple line, is gonna to have to be on the same circle with the center. There is only one circle that goes through the center. And it's this one, all right? So I, and I will write it here. I wanna be on a circle. Not this one, excuse me. 
that. Let me. Okay, I want to be on a the circle that has the same resistive parts for all of the impedances that belong to that circle. Okay, so all of these impedances have the same resistive part. And therefore, I am moving from here down, as the arrow shows, I'm moving from here down, and then I go, and then I go, until I find the red circle. All right, and then as soon as I find the red circle, which practically is here, then I'm going up and I stop there. And that is the center of the, of the chart. So practically if I follow these steps, I'm going first from, and then let me call this, Let's, uh, this one, oops, let me, Erase for a second, because they're too thick. This one here is ZL normalized, all right? Then I'm going from, and this corresponds to which points? According to our plan, it corresponds to DD prime, ZL. Then I'm going down until CC prime. So this is C, I will put only one. I don't have space for too many. So this is point CC prime. This is point DD prime. And then from CC prime, I add JX. And then I go, I go to point B. I'm going up only to find that point at the center of the chart. And now I am done with the solution. Yes. Because I don't have space to put it in. Right? I only put one. Okay. Now, okay, so I done I did that. How do I translate this, all of this movement, physical movement, into a distance? D, remember, we have to find D, D here, this is D. We have to find D and we have to find X. So the question is, how do I do this? Okay, for D, let's see how we're doing. What is D? D is the distance from D to C. So practically D is the length of that section of line. To find that, you will do the following. So D, for example, is the line that connects this point D, I mean, small d, is the line that connects DD prime to CC prime. So it it's, uh, corresponds to that part of the circle. But how do I go from the circle to measuring D? Here is how you're gonna do that. You are gonna draw two lines. One line is gonna connect the center of the Smith chart to point B. And is this one. The other line is gonna connect the center of the Smith chart to other point. All right, let me, in fact, do that a little more carefully. One second. Okay, let me do that straight. So you have to use for this, if you are not, if you are on paper, you will need a compass and you will need a ruler. I don't want you to solve me problems by hand. Let me tell you, if I, oh, let me be careful. If you guys try to solve these problems by doing this, I'm gonna give you zero. You know why? No, because the values are gonna be so different. They're not, they're gonna be totally incorrect. So you never touch a, a Smith chart unless you have a compass next to it. And uh, these are the two uh, requirements, nothing else. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going here to the outer, let me do this here. All right, I'm going to this outer line. Ah, okay, let me do it thick. Look at this one. Mm 
this line has numbers. And if I want to increase it and you read it well, this one says 0.25. All of this is length. All of the outer perimeter of the circle measures lengths, distances, right? All right, in, how, in what? In wavelengths. So that is a point of reference. It's not indicating anything. That's where I start at D. And then I move along this until I come to that point down here. All right, and then I will show both points. I'm starting from here and I'm coming down here. All right, and I'm taking the same direction as I'm moving on the Smith chart. All right, you remember which direction we are moving on? We are moving always like this. So we are moving always like this if we are from the load to the generator. Therefore, I'm gonna move now like this. So this is my end point, end point, beginning point. So I will write them. Also, that's what I would do. I will go here and write what I see. So here I see 0.25 and that's lambda. It's a reference number. And what do I read here? Point, this is point, this one here is 0.34. This one here is 0.35. So I put here 0.35 lambda, okay? Therefore, if I, when I take 0.35 lambda minus 0.25, Lambda, what do they give me? Point zero, well, point one rather. Point one lambda. So that one has to be D because this is the distance I have here is D. Okay, let me raise that. The distance, let me do it a little so it does not go through here, from there to there. This is D. Okay, let's see, have we, did we get D when we solve the problem? Ah, very close. I got 0 0.097. So we got 0.1 in this one. In fact, you know, the lines that I got, very good, very close, all right? So now I got that. What is next? Next is to find X. So let me write here, I found D to be 0.1 lambda. X, how am I gonna find X? You remember what I said? As I go from C to B, when I go from C to B, my point C and point B, they are nothing else but impedances. Remember that? Point C and point B, if I read, I can read them to you. So they, how much is the impedance at C? Let's do that for practice. Let's first of all find the input impedance here at C, normalized everything, all right? Always when you're on the Smith chart. How much is that? If I wanted to find this, it would be, the real part will normalize one, all right? It goes along the red circle. And the imaginary part, for the imaginary part, I have to go along this line that tells me how much the imaginary part is. And it's gonna give me the imaginary part normalized. So X is gonna be here minus 0.7 here. It says X here, uh, 
All right, so I'm writing here. It does not say X, it says Z between Z at C, C prime is one. Sorry, wait, does it do that for me? Okay. It moved it. When it moves, this thing bothers me. Okay. Z input at CC prime. Therefore, let me move this one here. Why does it do that? All right, I cannot move it. Uh, Z is one, is one minus J point seven point seven plus something. I will put point seven. All right, that's how much I can see. Okay, now. I have to go from minus 0.7 to one. And I'm going like this, you see that? I'm going up here like this. I have to go from minus 0.7 to one. Therefore, I have to add a x that is equal 0.7 because at one, I will cancel all of the reactants. All right. You say what I, I will write it down so you can see it from here. You see, I found that Z input at CC prime was one minus J point seven. One minus J point seven. And therefore I'm writing it here, one minus J 0.7. And I want, and this one, Z input at BB prime has to be one normalized. So that is one. And therefore I have to add something here to make this equal to that. So what do I add? J 0.7. So my X here has to be J normalized J 0.7. And that's what I'm writing here. Therefore X, so there's not the one, X normalized is 0.7. And what did I find for the solution 707? Well, 707 normalized, okay? So it's the, it's very close. To, so that's what I found. So that's how we solve this problem. There's no other thing that you need to do. If you learn how to solve one problem, you learn how to solve all of them. All right. I hope, do we have time to solve one more? Yeah, let's solve an, an arbitrary problem. You want us to, you tell me what to solve. How about that? Similar with the reactants, all right? Okay. So let me take this problem. I'll take this problem here. Copy and go here, add one more page, add page. Okay, in fact, yeah, uh, that one, if I move it, okay, just the one to have that a little bit. Let me move just one second. Let me do some. No, I can move it down. Okay, so we have this problem. How much do you want ZL to be? It does not have to be real. Let's do it. Let's do an arbitrary ZL. Who is going to tell me what you guys want? Okay. Value for ZL. Is it something more complex? 80. 80 what? And then what else? 
I heard somebody's day 20. <laughs> he came first. All right, so 80 plus J20. Okay, and we want to do the same thing. All right, we want to solve the same problem. Find a um, length on the line where I have reduced the reflection coefficient to zero. That's what it says. Now, even if, you see, even if that's resistive, I cannot add anything resistive. Don't mean because that has a resistive component, that one has to have a resistive component. No, you are forbidden from adding anything that has a resistor in there in a matching network. You can add capacitors, you can add inductors, you can add the whole thing. Not this one, not, not a resistor. Okay. In fact, this one, after we solve it, um, I will tell you how also to go further and maybe next time when you find the inductors and capacitors out of the X. All right, so now I'm gonna get this, copy and put it here. All right, but when I, what I do, I'll clean it up and then I'll clean it up. All right, now we're ready to go. Okay, first of all, normalize everything. What is characteristic impedance 50 ohms? So let's write the normalized um, load. That's the only thing we have. So the normalized load here is 80 divided by 50, which is 1.6, all right? Am I right? plus J.4, all right, 20 divided by 50. Okay, so now that's what we have. Everything else remains the same. So now we have to go and find that impedance normalized. Okay, so we go here, it's what is the real part? 1.6, let's find the circle that corresponds to 1.6. And that circle is here with red. <laughs> All right, Let me back that 1.6. Okay. All right, 1.6. Now let's find the circle that corresponds to plus 0.4. It's the imaginary part, the reactive part. So it's only the upper circle, which is plus, all right? You remember that? You see that here. Now I'm going to find 0.4. In fact, it's right there. So let me erase that part. 0.4, the circle 0.4 is this one. It's this one. Okay, so it intersects my resistive circle at this point. Therefore, the load that I have is right there. At the intersection of the two is this one. You remember what I said? After you find the load, get rid of your circles. So, because then they're gonna make things complicated. Okay. That's the load. What do we do next? We have to move on the transmission line, you remember? We have to move from the load towards the generator. So what do we have to find before we move? We have to find the circle that corresponds to this transmission line. Since the load is that, and I found the point, then I'm gonna draw the circle on the transmission line with purple and a little thicker. And the circle is gonna have its center at the center. You remember we said that? 
always, and then it will have to go like this. Let me make it a little thinner. Back this one, a little thinner. Okay, so this now is the circle that goes through this lobe. So, and this is the center. Now, from here, we can only move like that. From from this is. Let me write it here. This is the load normalized, and I will write it like this. Okay. And then from there, I can move only like that because I moved towards the generator. And I will move until when? I have to go to the center. I from here, from ZL, I have to go to the center. I cannot go like that. It's forbidden. Okay? I can only go like this. And then I can go along these lines. But I'm going to stop at the center of the circle. So I'm going to move. I'll show it to you first like this. Stop here. And then I will move like that. See? So the way I'm doing this to see, and I suggest that you do the same, I'm doing it like that. Because when, uh, first of all, I know the distances when you have a little more complexity. And I know where I stop. Because if you don't do that, even if you decide that you may stop here, when you draw lines, you will go to another point. Sometimes there are so many lines here that your eyes can play games with you. So please do this little arrow so you remember where to stop when you are thinking about that. Because you will have to find that point or you put the point down extensively. And then from there, I will have to move to the center of the chart. All right, if you saw that, I will have to go like this. So what do I do? I go along this line until I find the center of the chart. That's how you will see a lot of my solutions like this, because now I can see the path that I'm drawing. Okay, now that I've done that, I need from ZL from here, there, that is going to give me the length that I move. How am I going to find the length? I'm going to draw two green lines. One is going to go like that. And the other is going to go like this. From the center, we connect it to the two points of the green arrow. And then I'm going to go here and read this number. I will read this number here and I will write it. And so I suggest that you do very similar things because otherwise you can do the correct solution and write the wrong result. And that is gonna be 0.214 lambda. And then I'm gonna go down and do the same thing here. And then I write it down. And that is 0.3. Five two four six six lambda and d d is gonna be given by this distance and therefore d is gonna be point three five six minus point two one four lambda oops lambda. which is two, four, one, lambda. That's your D, you found it already. And then I'm gonna go to the pink part. And from there, I'm gonna draw the circle from this point that is gonna give the value for that, the reactive value. And the reactive value there which is here, I'm gonna write it, it's gonna be minus 0 0.55, all right? So now what I have 
as before, then I found that D is point one four two, and then X, as I did before, since you found minus point five five, that means that you have to move from there to zero because that corresponds to zero reactants. Then practically, I would need to add an X, which is point five five. And I solve the problem. See how, the, how easy it is to solve it? And I did all of this. So practically, you can imagine that if you are practice and you don't need to write all of these circles, I can write this path. I can write if you, you can, I can find with a lot of exercise. I don't expect you, but I want to show you why people use that. Because if you are, pra if you are, um, experience, you can go and do this and then that. And that's it, your solution is done without doing much, all right? That's why people are using it. And of course, with complex problems, it solves complex problems that equations you cannot even solve yourself. You would have to go to the computer to solve. <coughs> we'll see a couple of problems like this, this week, okay? So I'm recording this. I'm gonna put it up the recording. And I also have today another recording which up goes even more fundamental on the Smith chart. So to take one point at a time, you know, which are the circles, how you move around. If you forget that, go to that other recording, okay? Thank you. Thank you. 